Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, my lovely wife, Kara's busy, and this is the review on the Microtech Delta Direct Delta. Now, this knife uh, came straight to me from GP Knives, and I want to thank Abby Normal for, which is his channel name, um, for allowing me to check this thing out before, um, you know, brand new, fresh out of the box, you know, before he ever even got to experience it. And that's why I kind of rushed this. I rushed this so I could get it to him as soon as possible. And I didn't want it to show up scratched up or anything like that. Now I did cut with it. I did, uh, you know, carry it around in my pocket a little bit to, to be able to do this review, but I, you know, I did rush it a lot very quickly but i already got a great feel of it so let's just get right into it so this is not small but it feels smaller than it actually is the blade length is 3.75 with a total length of nine and a quarter but just holding it in my hand i wouldn't think it was that big but it's mainly because this handle is so long and then they add in the glass breaker back here now, I didn't test out the glass breaker or anything, but I have tested out some of Microtex glass breakers in the past, and they work great. Now, on just a quick size comparison, here is the Shurl Goroff F95 Monkey Edge Frag Pattern. And you can see the Microtech is a quarter inch, because this is a nine inch knife. It is a little bit longer than even the Shurl Goroff. Here is the Demco ad 15 and you can see same deal it is a little bit bigger than it so it is definitely a very long knife just to show you one more i'm going to show you the this is a pretty well-known knife the spider co para 2 and you can see how it's quite a bit bigger now Let's just get directly into this and let's talk about its cutting performance because its cutting performance, it's not great, but it's not really that kind of knife and I understand that. We'll get into that here in a second, but first let's just talk about its cutting. So it does not cut very well. Um, you know, it, it can, it can cut, you know, obviously it can cut. It's about 20 thousandths behind the edge. At the heel of the blade, it's about 15, and then up towards uh, the halfway point, it gets up to about 20 thousandths behind the edge. So not very thin behind the edge. The blade stock is about 120 thousandths. So since it doesn't have very far to taper down to a fine edge, it's just not gonna be a great slicer and it's not it, it, you know and also you don't have the ability to put your finger on the edge to kind of drive it through you have to keep your your hands kind of back on the handle when cutting now talking about that you know if you if you find the right materials it's going to cut just fine if the cardboard's a little thinner i did grab some thinner cardboard and it cut better than cutting thicker cardboard but you know it's just not that kind of knife now when you have it in hand you do have to be careful not to let your finger go like this and make a cut or when you're cutting and you go to make a repeat cut not to let the edge come back and get you because it's a double edge knife so you do have to always be aware that it is a double edge knife when using it because you can come backwards and cut yourself just as easily as you can forward so you have to be cognitive of that at all times now going to the utility cuts you don't have the ability to put your finger on the blade and cut like this. So you have to use your handle or hand like this in those cuts. So, but it does do the utility cuts pretty good. And that's because it has such an acute tip. I mean, the tip is very, very pokey. And because it's very pokey, it is going to do utility cuts pretty decently. Not bad, at least. Now, it's not a utility cutting knife, so you're not going to have the leverage that you want behind those cuts. But you have the, the blade for it. Or should I say you have the tip for it. Now, you do have to be careful with it because this is going to be a tip that will easily chip and roll. This one is in Elmax steel. So since it's in Elmax steel, the Elmax is going to have great edge retention and it's a great steel, but that doesn't stop it from chipping the tip, you know? So 
you know, don't, you don't want to drive it through anything and let it, you know, go across the surface of something because it will wreck the tip very easily. In sharpening one of these, I did not sharpen this, but sharpening one of these, you do, you know, it, it, it can be tough. And, um, you just, you know, matching up the two angles to a perfect acute tip, you know, can be, uh, you know, a little frustrating, you know, but, you know, it's obviously it's, uh, it's not that big of a deal, but if you chip the tip, you got to match that back up. Otherwise it doesn't wind up looking as beautiful as it does now. Now let's talk about the carry, um, the carrying in the pocket. So, you know, it is very long in the pocket, but it does, the clip works, okay? But there is one little spot right here that when your seam of your pants is going underneath, you got to get over this part. And it, it's not that easy. So going in out of the pocket kind of wants to stop right there, and then you got to kind of shove it in to get it to go all the way. Now, there's nothing in your path to stop you like screws or anything like that but there is this little hump and then when you try to take it back out of your pocket holding the clip puts pressure on that hump and it makes it to where it doesn't you know it, it's a little tougher to get out of the pocket i did find though if you hold it by the sides and pull it out it works a lot easier than grabbing it by the clip and pulling it out because when you grab it by the clip in the back of the knife and pinch it just puts pressure on the clip it makes it you know not want to come out as easily as if you just grab the sides now i will say though you can get it in and out of your pocket just fine if you need to so it's not one of those situations where you're not going to be able to in a self-defense situation or a situation where you need your knife you can be damn sure you'll get it out of your pocket just fine. So I just want to make that uh, clear. Um, now the the sixty one sixty aluminum handles has a, like a matte finish on it that is well done. It has a um, a good texture to it. I personally like the texture. Some people don't like this texture. They think it feels chalky. Uh, me personally, I don't. I actually like it. It gives you a little bit of um, res I don't know if you'd call it resistance, but just a little bit of a texture in the hand from sliding and slipping and sliding in the hand. Now it also has jimping all around, so that also helps. And then it has the contouring for the fingers. So it's actually very comfortable in the hand, um, aside from the, the glass breaker. And that's another thing going in the pocket. When you push it into your pocket, you know, you are going to be poking yourself by the glass breaker, pushing it into the pocket. Not that big of a deal. I'm just bringing it up because it is a thing that you're going to have to deal with constantly if you have this knife putting it in and out of your pocket. But let's talk about the action now. Um, the action is great. It is very, very powerful. You can feel the spring, you can hear it. Now, the, you're not going to accidentally misfire this. It does have a strong amount of pressure. And if you look, when I go to disengage it, I have to mean to push it. So same thing with the open. Like It's not like I can just push the button a little bit and it opens. That's not the way it is. You have to put your finger, and I like that they have the, the gripping on the button because it gives you good traction. And then with the powdered finish, or I'm not going to say powder finish, with the, the finish that they have on this, the matte finish, whatever you want to call it, it gives you a good amount of texture to stop it from sliding. And then the button has a good amount of texture. And once you push it up, it's going to stop. So you're going to have spring tension, a lot of spring tension, which actually does give you a lot of resistance in the button. So once you get it to there, now, after you get it to there, once you pass that spot, it will fire. Now, that does take a good amount of effort, though. It's not easy. Like, it's not like you just barely touch it and it springs out. You have to hold that knife, put pressure all the way up to that point, and then break that point, and it will fire. Same thing with the clothes. So it's not like it'll just go off in your pocket. I've never, ever, ever, not once had an OTF go off in my pocket, not once. And that's, and I used to carry one all the time with lots of things rubbing and, you know, on my pockets and, you know, in between um, 
going through obstacles and working on houses and all kinds of stuff, jumping from things never once. It's just, it's not possible. It's just, there's so much spring tension that this isn't something you're gonna do. Now, a lot of people wonder, well, what if it does? Let's say it does go off in your pocket. Is it going to stab you in the leg? It's gonna poke you, but it's not going to, it's not gonna kill you. If you've seen that, Yes, it will poke you. This is foam, so this is very easy to stab, but it will disengage. And then you can't, you, or now it's not going to do anything. So what I'm trying to say is it's going to open up and then stop itself. And now it, it's, it can't do anything. So what you have to do is you have to grab the blade, pull it out, and relock it in place. Then it's good to go. But it's very easy to stop this blade from opening with anything in front of it. I have um, a little very thin piece of cardboard right now I'm going to show you. It's just a box, a cereal box. This is a cereal box and it could not make it through. Literally the, the, the very tip might have poked through but that's it. So if it goes off and it hits you in the leg it's going to sting but it's not, it's not going to do much more than, a, you know, a flush damage. That's it. You know, it's going to be a flush wound. You're going to have be a little poked and the blade will stop. And then you will have to, you know, re-pull out the blade to, to lock it back open to make it fire again. Otherwise, it won't fire. Now, you see that they have the proprietary hardware that... Uh, you can get the tool for, but I just recommend just sending these in. Do not work on them yourself. Back in the day, I worked on one myself and it was a disaster. Granted, I was young. It was the first one I ever worked on, but yeah, it was not, <laughs> it was not good. So you can see this one is a brand new one, January 2021. Here is the the packaging for it. These things go for about 350 bucks from GP Knives. Now there's other places you can get them from, but here's the packaging. Well, now let's talk about what these things are really for, right? Let's talk about what they're really for because all these things we've been talking about, they're not for that. You know, this is a, uh, I, I want to call it an old crap knife, right? This is the knife that you use when you're in an old crap situation and you need to defend yourself or something like that. Can it be used as an EDC knife? Yeah, absolutely. You can use anything as an, as an EDC knife. You could sharpen a butter knife and use it as an EDC knife, but it's not really for that. You know, it's, it's, there's going to be so many knives that are better at EDC than this that this that's why this is not an EDC knife. This is a knife that you spring out when you need a knife extremely fast and it's for penetrating. So it is a double edged knife. Either way you swing it, it's got an edge. So whether you're swinging forward or backwards, it does have an edge. But the tip and the, the blade is designed for penetrating. Now, in that type of instance, which I hope no, none of you ever have to get into, um, you know, you are going to want to be careful not to slip up the blade because if you did or slip up the handle. So, you know, you want to make sure you're locked on very, very good. That's why it's good that there is a little bit of texturing in some of these areas. But in that sense, this it's going to be a decent knife. Now, I've seen people take some of these and hammer them through a table <clears throat> so a lot of people wonder like well is it gonna fail like if you did stab like if i stabbed a, a wooden a piece of wood right now is it gonna fail most likely no um i do not see it failing like i said i seen uh, i seen a cheap one a knockoff brand get stabbed into a table and then hammered all the way through it and that it was a thick piece of wood so i don't see it that happening i see this being just fine and reliable now there is going to be a little bit of play like with almost every single otf it's just the nature of the beast it needs that to run good kind of like a firearm um you know like pieces sometimes need to be a little bit rattly to make them operate really good you know and the, if the tolerances are too tight it, it, it'll make it fail so you do not want the tolerances too tight. Now I know there are, there's a brand out there, there's one out there that is as tight as it could be and that's awesome. But most OTFs you are going to have a little bit of play, but that doesn't stop it from being as strong as it possibly can be.
all in all, I think this thing's pretty awesome. Now, some of the bad things, if I was going to say some of the bad things, you know, like I said, you, you poke yourself right here going into the pocket. This little divot right here is a little troublesome getting in and out of the pocket sometimes. I don't like proprietary hardware, but I understand it. In this example, I get it. The next thing is that, you know, it's not gonna be very EDC oriented. It's not gonna be the best blade shape for EDC and the grind is not for, for cutting, you know, it's for poking, you know, so it's not gonna be the best cutter. It can get you by. So if you did have to make one, two cuts or something like that, you can do it. You just wanna be careful not to, you know, you know, get yourself with that blade. Other than that, I mean, really, uh, it scratches, it's going to scratch, you know, this is aluminum and the coating, even though the Microtech does great coating. So I do not, I'm not saying their coating isn't durable because it's very, very durable, but you're going to want to be careful not to, not to slide it across concrete or anything like that because it's going to scratch. So, you know, be careful not to scratch the surface. The blade, um, it's going to be the same way. Now, their coating, their DLC coating is very good. Um, I believe this is a DLC, but their coating is going to be good. It's just, it, you, you know, you do not, you know, it can scratch too. Just like any coating. Now, through the cutting that I did with it, it's fine. Held up just fine. Even the tip is just as sharp as it was out of the box. So, you know, it, it's a very durable knife, but you know, you, the coating can scratch, just like any coating. But I think it's about as durable as it could be. Um, same thing with the clip. When, you know, you're carrying it around, it, it will get scratched up. And, you know, this there is that thing, though, where, you know, we talk about branding on clips. Now, anybody who knows anything is going to know this is an OTF in your pocket. So, you know... I don't know if that's a bad thing or not, but you know, just be aware that anybody who knows anything about a knife is gonna know you have an OTF in your pocket. So be aware of your knife laws. And really, I don't really have anything really bad to say about it, you know, because you know, it's pretty awesome. And for what it's for, that is specifically what it's for. And you can't knock something for not being what it's not, you know, so. Um, it's definitely a badass knife and it's made for, you know, badass stuff, I guess. So that's what it is. And thank you guys for watching. And thank you, Abby. I love you guys. Peace.